Greg Mike. Yeah. You are live. We're live. How are you? Dude, I'm good, man. This is, um, life is just getting stranger and stranger every day, <laughs> it seems. That's the truth. I didn't think we'd be sitting in t inside of a shipping container right now. That's where we're at, right? <laughs> well, that's where I am, man. You're, <laughs> where, where are you? You're sitting in front of a beautiful painting. You're at home. Yeah. I'm uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, home base. Uh, yeah, sit in front of a Tommy Ronks piece, who's one of our artists in the ABV Collective, which is nice. uh, it's lovely, lovely yeah. backdrop, dude. Um, oh, you know what? The first thing I want to do, mate. How about this? So we are on Zoom. We're using Zoom. This is the first uh, remote podcast. Obviously, we're doing this because um, there is now a safer at home order in place which means that we can't even group a couple of people together to do the podcast. And, you know, rightly so, we're trying to um, do every, everything we can to stop this spreading. Um, but, mate, I'm just going to jump into my, my uh, video settings and turn on, <laughs> touch up my appearance. <laughs> nice. Has that done anything? Yeah, you look wonderful, man. All right, mate, let me know if you want to do that, although you're looking good. Um, <laughs> Greg... Yeah, how's it going, man? How like how are we adapting? Um, yeah, I mean, how are you coping? It's obviously crazy times right now. Um, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, we've kind of had to just reimagine, you know, our everything from all our live event space, live art stuff. You know, we do a lot of things with music festivals and all that stuff got postponed due to the virus. Um, our gallery event you know we just last night launched a virtual edition of drink and doodle which is our monthly drawing club we've been doing that for 10 10 years um it's really cool it was actually through a zoom zoom meeting as well and we had 12 artists and they're all in their respective homes and uh they all dialed in and uh, we had one zoom room that had all these artists drawing and then we had an online auction uh, with all the pieces that went up so people were in their own homes watching all these artists draw in their own homes and studios yeah and they were able to bid on the pieces at the end of the night and you know all the pieces sold and it was an awesome experience so i think that's kind of like the mindset where we're at right now is like how do we adapt and change and keep moving forward and keep bringing art uh, you know to people uh, with what we got to work with so yeah of course man so what does um like for the people listening that don't know what does a normal drink and doodle look like you know pre yeah typically lockdown? typically it's in our gallery space in atlanta abv and you know it's we get a few hundred people in one room all the artists are at one long table like kind of banquet style uh they're able to drink and draw and hang out and conversate and create new work live and then the work goes uh on a wall in the gallery and then it goes up for silent auction so yeah and then you know, are, are, are people who aren't uh, drawing allowed in or is it kind of like a a private thing no so it's open to the public so anybody can come in there and, and check it out and you know it's became like this creative hub in atlanta for a lot of artists and designers and people in the industry to to meet talent and pick up art and collect art from uh, local artists uh, at like a, a more affordable uh, entry-level price point which is nice um, but the cool thing about like how this whole situation has evolved, you know, encouraged us and, and made us evolve is, you know, now with having this thing broadcast globally, we went from only the people that could live in Atlanta come to this gallery show to now we're opening it up to the world. So actually last night was our most successful drink and doodle that we've done, which is wild, you know, from in terms of like a sales standpoint and, you know, viewers and how many people got eyes on the room and the artists and just like the community being excited for it, I feel like. So, yeah. you know, it's crazy. Like you never know how things like this could, could change things for the better. So, you know, we try to look at the positive light of things and figure out how we can steer the ship in that direction. Yeah, of course, because I'm, I'm guessing that the, um, you know, the physical drink and doodles as they've uh, happened before haven't had any kind of like live stream element right 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 i mean maybe like here and there we've done like some igtv live you know some instagram live facebook live stuff off like mobile devices but we've never had every single artist be streaming their own piece in front of them so i think it, it definitely opened the doors and opened our eyes to something new which we're going to incorporate you know hopefully once the space gets back open we'll we'll still incorporate that yeah. online and that live streaming like have each artist still be live streaming and then also the the physical um, you know, in gallery experience as well. So, mate, it's great, and it, it, it's really good to hear as well because obviously, like everyone knows the kind of severity of the situation. But 
I personally find it really inspiring um, when I'm hearing of people like yourselves that are kind of, you know, realizing that we're all in a bit of a shit situation. It is what it is. But on the one side, we're doing everything we can to kind of like stay safe and, um, you know, keep everyone around us safe. But then on the other side, it's like, okay, how can we adapt and keep morale up and, and you know, m make the best out of the situation that we find ourselves in? Um, so to hear that, like, because it's similar for sequels, you know, we're, we're about to do our um, first uh, live streamed battle on, um, on Instagram stories this Friday. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot, as I'm sure you, you have had with your team, like we've had a few team chats that are kind of like low energy where we're kind of realizing the situation that we're in and realizing everything that has just been kind of taken away from our business in, in like one sweep. But then on the flip side, we've also had a bunch of conversations and, and meetings that are like really positive. Exactly what you're saying, where, where we're yeah. kind of thinking, you know, we've been forced into to thinking of these ideas that we probably wouldn't have thought of anyway. Which yeah, I, th I think there were ideas that maybe like we've all thought of, but it was like there was never really a need to pursue that because we're so used to that physical interaction and that experience. So it definitely kind of pushed us to really get creative and, and think through those thoughts. So Yeah, mate, it's amazing. And I think it probably, um, well, I'm, I'm sure it does have that desired effect because I don't know if you're like me, but obviously i mean i'm in the studio now i'm in the podcast studio because my internet connection at home was just playing up this morning but when i'm at home i've got cnn on like, like the yeah. whole time and um you know it, it it starts to make you feel a bit crazy because i mean i don't think they're particularly trying to be like a overtly negative but um you know it's st stressful uh no, i mean stressful a lot of the viewing yeah, a lot of that stuff's like clickbait, you know what I mean? And they know what they're doing, and that's why it's it's kind of crazy. And even my wife's like, hey, get off the internet, like get off the news sites because that shit will drive you crazy, you know what I mean? And I feel like art is like that only time when I kind of like forget all that shit. Like last night, I mean, it was like the first time in, what, two weeks when I was like, my brain wasn't like, you know, scouring news sites to see if there was a cure or what the, you know, the, the death tolls were at or what the numbers were at. Like I was finally like back in my zone so so i feel like it's important to do this those these type of things that we're doing whether it is the live drinking doodle stuff or the secret wall stuff to, you know digitally that we're doing because and we had so many people that like wrote in the comments were like oh my god this is what i needed like i finally took a break from the madness and like got lost you know in my own mind and you know, yeah it's it's a, it's, a, it's a welcome distraction from yeah. just um being fixated i was reading something recently um maybe yesterday on how you know not only is this a pandemic but also like an info an infodemic i think they described it as where like you know obviously the virus is is viral in itself like it's it's a virus that is kind of infecting person to person it's very serious but also the um like the kind of um the information and hype around it is also going viral you know so exactly what we're talking about here it's it, you know it's kind of infecting people with anxiety as well because everyone is kind of like um you know what like everyone's got cnn on the whole time and we're kind of hearing all this like terrifying stuff so i think that it's it's really important to um to have things like this the, you know the live drink and doodle to kind of you know get it like snap us out of that space yeah and like you know you, you see it on the news on websites and obviously social media like everywhere everyone's posting about it and you know, I mean, it's like a blessing and a curse, right? Because, like, it spread so fast. But then you think back of, like, the Spanish flu and, like, they didn't have Internet like that. And, like, they didn't know what this, a disease of that nature could, you know, knock you out that quick. So it was like, you know, it's good because we're prepared and we, like, know what's coming versus, like, back in the day, like, you're just getting knocked out left and right and not knowing what it is or, you know, imagine that. But so yeah. there's definitely pros and cons but I, i'm definitely yeah i definitely see and concerned about like the mental health aspect of yeah no, what I, it's doing to people like uh, you know I, just i'm been... with you i'm with you because i think i'm like i'm one of those people like sometimes i will be like okay look you know all this information is freaking me out i just want to like turn it off you know yeah but i could already tell with this it took a little while for for the kind of news to like really get through to me um, and for me to kind of be like, oh, okay, I, I, you know, I know what I need to do now. And in terms of like just making sure that like, 
you know your personal hygiene is on like 11 you know and that you are practicing social distancing and all that stuff like again i i think i i don't think that without the kind of influx of of information coming through the tv and coming through social media i, I don't know how quickly i would have kind of got my shit together on that yeah um, for sure. so so yeah i i'm with you i see it from both sides as well but yeah the flip side is that it can just like weigh heavy you know on your mind i feel like i'm one of those people that's quite you know i can um i can be quite rational in these kind of scenarios and be like well look I, you know i feel healthy right now so i don't need to like absolutely freak out but then even even now man i think you mentioned it before there are times where i'm just lying in bed and out of nowhere i'm just like oh fuck yeah yeah you know it, it feels weird um but mate so so you know leading on from your um kind of like social media awareness campaign which again i agree man i think it's great because it's colorful and it's vibrant and even though you are trying to deliver the same message which is like you know do what you can to kind of like flatten the curve um it's delivered in as positive a way as as, as possible which is awesome um but i feel like for you especially like you, you know in your home city of atlanta um, you do quite a lot of like community based work or like kind of charity based work with your art anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like an over art, like an underlining tone with my work is it, I try to keep it pretty positive. I mean, there definitely is some like sinister aspect in a lot of this stuff and you know, some twists to it. But I mean, I think overall, like if I'm putting out stuff in the public space, I want to make sure that it's making people feel positive and you know, a certain type of way. So, and I mean, you've seen like some of the billboards and stuff that we do around town and most of that stuff is pretty positive or thought provoking messaging that hopefully people, you know, driving in their car on the way to, way to work or to and from and see it and it makes them think and stop. You know, I created this whole character, Larry Loudmouth, 10 years ago. And then as it evolved, it became this like, all right, what's Loudmouth saying, right? And there's this character with like, what's his voice? So now the voice is like evolved into this, you know, voice of the people which is cool you know we do this whole competition loudmouth says where people put their phrases and they submit their phrases we pick winners they go up on billboards and now it's kind of like spread you know globally which is tight so you know that's the goal is to kind of kind of make people think and hopefully keep keep it positive and put a smile on people's face with the colors and and characters and whatnot yeah man no and it does that i love uh, larry larry loudmouth the last time i was hanging out with you in atlanta you had the um like the mascot yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll show up every, every now and then. It's funny because people think it's me, and it's definitely not me. So especially when I show up and I'm with them, and I'm like, like <laughs> "Who's the man behind the mask?" I'm like, "You don't know. It might might not be a man." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mate. Loud, loudmouth needs to make an appearance on um, on the Zoom. Yeah, for sure. Because I uh, imagine that costume. He's isolated. He's isolated in his right. own cave right now. So I actually haven't seen him in a in a few weeks, unfortunately. But hopefully, mate, we'll bless. meet again. Bless Larry Loudmouth. He's, <laughs> he's not really getting the outings that he used yeah, to, right? I know, I know. Just keeping his social distance. He's been cooped up in his cave, just waiting to come out. And, <laughs> Mate, and especially, rage, you know? especially him, because he's got that big old mouth. I know, I so know. The sneezes, and the, even when yeah. he's talking, you have to yeah. be like, bro. I mean, that'd, that'd be a big mask to cover that thing. I know, <laughs> having, I know they're having some shortages with the mask. He would need like at least six or seven kind of <laughs> sewn together. Break, break them down thing. and sew them together for him. <laughs> it's probably not worth it. I think... Yeah. I think uh, uh, the health workers probably need it more than yeah, him for sure um and talk like speaking of billboards and stuff like that man obviously you are um y you know you're a big street artist well like globally but also in in your city of atlanta dude like what's you know what's happening i mean i imagine that you must have had like a a ton of murals whether they're at festivals or just like your own murals planned or you know, like brand collabs that have all just like vanished or, you know, post been postponed. And this will be echoed in the whole street art community. So any yeah, it's crazy, man. Like, I mean, the last two weeks, there was probably like 10 to 15 projects that were all, you know, scheduled that just disappeared. So, I mean, I think that too, you know, like I said, like maybe that fueled that fueled some of that uh, campaign messaging that, that went into those free posters and prints that I put out like the you know, the stuff that you're talking about on social media, like, I think a lot of that, like, energy came from, like, all that stuff disappearing, too. It was, like, I had all this creative energy that was kind of bent up, ready to hit the streets and hit these festivals and, 
you know, I was going to travel and paint all over, and then that just disappeared. So I was like, what am I going to do? And, and, you know, those thoughts just kept resonating in my head. So I think that's kind of what fueled a lot of that as well. But, yeah, I mean, there was, you know, mural festivals, music festivals, um, just murals in town, brand collaborations with sports teams, you know, that I've worked with. A lot of that stuff. I mean, as soon as all, like, the, those sports teams, their seasons dropped, everyone's like, well, it doesn't make sense for us to do this. You yeah. Know, let's see what happens. And everybody's kind of, like, on pause right now. So, yeah. And you, you, you're a sports guy, right? Yeah, man. I like sports for sure. I mean, I grew up playing sports. But, I mean, I've always liked, you know, I like a little bit of everything, you know. I grew up skateboarding, snowboarding, but also playing basketball and, you know, a little yeah. bit of everything, you know. Well, we, so. we had um, Marcus uh, McDougal, who's the, um, one of the creative high-ups at LAFC. He was on our last podcast, and, and we were just kind of talking about the, um, like the social significance um, of these massive uh, sports just kind of stopping, you know? Yeah. And that, that was another thing that just kind of like when that happened, it, it, it made it real. Right? Freaky, eerie, yeah. you know? Yeah. These like, things okay. that are just like staples, like week to week staples. And you know, I'm in America, I'm, I'm a big soccer fan, so I'm always keeping an eye on the, like, the Premier League, the UK soccer, the MLS has just started. Um, you know, so that's a couple times a week. But then you've got like basketball, which is, you know, there's, there's multiple games a week and it all just vanishes. Um, and same for us, you know, Secret Wars kind of uh, is, we do a lot of kind of sport events, sport activations and help MLS kind of launch various um, projects and it all just kind of vanished, man. It makes it, it's, it's really eerie. Um, but for you, like how, you know, how, how were you feeling when that started to happen versus how you feel now? Because I imagine yeah. at the start it was quite terrible. Yeah, no, and that's definitely interesting. Um, I was kind of, you know, obviously upset and pissed off and confused and whatnot right when it happened. And I mean, I went through probably like three or four days of just, you know, being really short tempered. And even my wife was like, you got to snap out of it, dude. Like, what's up? Like, you know, mind over matter on this thing. It's going to, you know, it'll take some time. But I think after like the fourth or fifth day, I kind of, you know, I realized that it's out of my control and it's not something that I'm just going through, but every single person is, is going through this. And, you know, you see online, there's people that are kind of, you know, complaining about it. And, you know, you just got to like be better than that and realize that, you know, everybody else is in this is in your shoes as well. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of people that are losing a lot harder than you are. So, you know, with this whole crisis and whatnot. So I think after like that third or fourth day, that's like when we got together with the team, we're like, all right, let's, you know, we're creative people. That's what, you know, that's what we do. So let's put our creative hats on and, and move everything virtual for now. And, you know, hopefully there'll be a silver lining to this thing, right? You know, like, you know, we, we were saying, like, there's things that are going to come out of it that we never expected. You know, like our whole gallery that I own, like, we did a whole 3D tour within, like, 24 hours, which was epic. You know, we had a show up for, from an artist, Charlie Edmondson, who's L.A. based, and he had his opening. And then his, the next day, they were like, yo, we got to close the door to your shows. I was like, oh, my God, like, that's horrible for him. But I was like, how can we make this situation better? So we got a 3D crew in there. And, it 3D the whole space and it links to our artsy page and you can buy work and it feels like you can walk in there. Again, it's like now you can visit the gallery on a global level versus only being Atlanta. So, you know, hopefully there's things like that that will carry on, you know, moving forward. That's dope, man. You're giving me loads of ideas. Um, yeah. For, and for like, secret. I mean, like the other thing too is, you know, it was kind of, I started thinking more and more and it's like, this is good family time. You know what I mean? It's good creative time. It's like, you know, I never get the chance. Like, I mean, I've never had this much time with my family. I just had a new daughter uh, that was recently born. She's, you know, five weeks old. So, I mean, it's a blessing in disguise maybe that I'm able to, you know, hang out with her in these, these, these times when I'd be crazy at work and flying all over the place and painting walls and whatnot. So, you know, you got to look at the positive side of everything. You know, I heard somebody say the other day, they were like, they signed like an email and it said, you know, stay positive, test negative. And that, that really resonated with me. I like that. So, you know, there's a lot of these that I've been picking up, just like what people are saying here. And, you know, it seems like everybody is way more connected now. Like I'm getting FaceTime calls every day from friends, colleagues, artists, you know, all over the world that like I don't even talk to that much that are just hitting me and like, hey, man, how's it going? You holding up all right? How's the family? Everything good? Like these are like, you know, calls that you don't typically get on the daily and people just want that like personal connection and like that, uh, you know, that little bit of like socialization, which is cool. Yeah. So, 
That yeah. is inter That's really interesting because it's it's funny, isn't it? We we've obviously, you know, in 2020, there is more ways to communicate with each other than like ever before. But I do feel like most of it is kind of like one step removed. So, yes, people are on like Instagram Live and recording stories and posting on Instagram, but it's kind of maybe more rare that like you know people do, will often choose to text rather than have a phone call yeah. and you know use so, like use social media rather than like use facetime and i'm experiencing and that, the same thing there's a lot of actual like the next best thing to being in a room with someone yeah and i feel like it definitely it like pulled a lot of people's like shields down and like you know what i mean like it made people way more real you know what i mean like real quick like you saw a lot of people's true colors you know like how they were expressing themselves online you know um and also just like i don't know i feel like it really just like made people you know like cut the bullshit out you know it's like you know people were like way more authentic and like you know way more real on their on everything they were they were putting up in their own voice and where they were at you know so yeah and like i don't know like i at like that four or fifth day point too i also like realized how like like important of a time period it is for creatives right now because like we are so used to being so crazy and so busy and like not taking the time. Like there's a million projects. I have a laundry list of like these passion projects or ideas or things that I want to do that I'm like always like, oh yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. When on earth will we ever have another time in our lives where we're sitting in our home or our studios and able to have this much time to focus on, you know, those type of projects or crafts or ideas or planning for the future. I mean, uh, you know, I saw somebody, I posted it the other day that said like, this is, you know, the quarantine is a creative prison in a positive sense. It's like, you know, like artists are usually, whether you're a musician and you're touring all around the world, like you don't get dedicated studio time. That's always like, for me, I mean, like as a, as a, as a studio artist too, it's like, it always is like, seems to be the last thing on my list. You know, it's like, you're always flying around painting murals, doing events, you know, product releases, whatnot. And then it's like, okay, when I have studio time, I'll fit it in and I'll work on some paintings. Yeah. You know, so like, that whole thing is like flipped now. So like, I think 2021 is going to be, we're going to see some incredible great projects that are released, you know, from artists that are working on pieces, solo shows to musicians working on albums to, you know, business, you know, entrepreneurs that are like finally working on that business plan that they never had the time to do. So I don't know. I think there is going to be some beautiful things that come out of this thing. Yeah, it is really rough right now, but you know, I'm interested to see when people are able to have this much time to be creative. Yeah, it's interesting. Did you see the um, the little like uh, p picture floating about, the image floating about, saying like the last time, maybe it was like the re the recession or the stock market crash or something, the companies that were oh yeah, um, all the companies conceived. that were developed like Uber and yeah, yeah and, like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's you know, there's probably a lot of parallels on that, and I think what you're saying is true, man. It's going to be it's it's you know, it's a test for people. I mean, obviously, if you, you know, if, if all you're going to do is kind of sit around and survive, I think that's fine. That's cool. Um, but for me, it's really testing that kind of uh, the procrastination side of me, you know, yeah. because obviously what with what I do um, with Secret Walls and I'm sure with what you do because of the kind of status you're at now within the art um, world, you could almost not think of like new ideas and just react to what's coming to you on a, on a usual day. You could just react to, to everything that's coming to you and still be so busy that you're just working 24 seven nonstop. Yeah. But, but as you've mentioned, as those, um, as those kind of opportunities cease, because you know, this brand isn't launching this project anymore. This brand can't do this, like uh, this event with a crowd anymore. As those stop, it really, you know, that's what I'm finding. It's like, okay, we've all got a kind of um we've all got to create the, the thing that we're going to do you know uh, and not just kind of sit around and twiddle our thumbs so yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm finding quite difficult yeah no exactly exactly um but mate so look what where do you think this is all going then man i mean like what how how's your kind of anxiety level at the minute I mean, obviously, this is just, um, I just find it interesting to hear people's perspectives, but there's kind of best case scenarios and worst case scenarios. Like, are you, are you freaking out about the future or do you feel quite positive that you... I mean, you last know, night with that event, like, that definitely, like, you know, that definitely uh, excited me and, and showed me hope and that people are, 
you know, like I said, like that was one of the most successful ones we've done. We've, we've done it in 10 years and to see that the online community was so excited about it and um, so many people tuned in, like that's, that's definitely some hope. I mean, the beautiful thing about humans is we're such great adapters, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if, if it is that we have to be locked inside forever, we're going to adapt and, you know, figure out how to live that lifestyle. And, you know, people, you know, it's just going to, the past will fade away and there'll be a new normal and is what it is. I mean, I don't think anyone knows, you know, obviously when it's going to go back to what it will or, or if it's going to change even when it goes back to that. Like, are people going to be different or, you know, more hesitant about being at live events or in crowded spaces or whatnot. Um, but I think we just got to keep staying creative and coming up with these ideas. And, you know, as long as it's fresh and new and people are going to be excited about it and they're going to engage. So, yeah, it's true. But, and like the, this, it's like, un, it's unlike anything that's come before it, you know, with other kind of like similar events, like natural disasters, or whatever it might be, you know, something horrific will happen, but it's kind of like it happens, you can process it, and then you just feel the effects, but you kind of know where you are with the effects to a certain point. The, the crazy thing with this is I'm just finding that, like, it's moving and changing, like the effects are changing at such a fast pace that you'll plan to do, you know, you'll plan to be creative or, or do your work in one way, one day, and then literally the next day you can't do that anymore, you know? So for us with Secret Walls, obviously we, we couldn't do live events anymore. So we kind of shifted our focus into like podcasts. Um, and you know, we got Marcus down for the last podcast and he was in the studio with me, but now we can't do that, you know? Yeah. Um, and one, you know, we, 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 we were gonna plan to do events without crowds a certain way but then again you know things changed and um these kind of safety uh, safer at home orders were put in place which just it you know it changes the way that we were planning to do the thing that we were changing from our original concept you know what i mean everything's kind of needing to evolve at such a fast pace it's it's getting crazy so i imagine you're kind of experiencing that as well 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah man so. and do you but like do, you know you're feeling quite good about the way things are going it, like what about you as an artist because obviously the drink and doodle seems like you've got that kind of yeah unlock. i mean that's just obviously one little aspect of one of the businesses that i run so are you not going to lose your mind not being able to um get out there and paint massive murals or have you got uh, a big if you got a big guy i mean luckily like i have a lot of commissions and projects and like studio art stuff that i need to focus on like i think there's like you know like there's a long laundry list of commissions that I've kind of just been putting on the back burner because I've been traveling and doing these collabs and whatnot. So I have a lot of work to do in the studio and I need to work on a new solo show. So a lot of that stuff is things that could take six to eight months. I mean, my goal is to like, you know, while I'm you know coming up with new concepts to go virtual with, also on my studio stuff, um, just focusing on that stuff so that I have an arsenal of stuff when I you know the things do turn back around you know i got a bunch of bunch of stuff ready to fire off you know what i mean whether that's launching a new show or having all these paintings done or concepts for the future you know and mate i just want to i just want to you know stockpile it all and then be ready to go yeah exactly that um that art show could very likely be virtual <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but well at least when it's done i can do it. just uh, exactly yeah, and that's the yeah. thing this is what uh, this is what i'm finding because again you know we ha we had like live events planned that we can't do anymore um <clears throat> so we're trying to with that there's 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 events like live events that haven't been postponed or cancelled but they've been pushed back and we're putting like you know we're working with a brand and we're putting a contingency plan into how can this event to launch this this product go ahead um you know in like best case scenario in a few months time we can do it at our space and a crowd can come back in and we can have a sequels battle and everyone can party great but you know what if we can't do that so we're we're having to adapt on like multiple levels but the cool thing as you're talking about is that i'm already thinking like we're learning new ways and new skill sets and new kind of new things to offer the people that we're working with you know so going forward in the future and ho you know hopefully everything gets back to normal quickly but our shows, you know, will, will just be better with oh, yeah. more kind of components. And as you're saying, like more people can watch from all over the world, you know? Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. It's, and even stuff like this, man, like the podcast, you know, you're in Atlanta, I'm in Los Angeles. Um, if this hadn't have happened, we probably would just be still trying to get people into our studio, 
you know yep. and we would have had to have waited till i came back to atlanta or or you came to yeah atlanta. exactly i mean who knows when we would have actually got the time to sit down yeah you no know? so it's a blessing so this is good mate um yeah i'm excited to see where you guys take it too now that you can you can basically dial up anyone all over the world and interview them you know what I mean? yeah so. no it's good and we you know we've got to take advantage of that and it's the same with um with the uh live stories battles that we're going to do as well yep so that will be our first ones this friday you got to tune into that greg mate and then oh for sure you know and how's it how is la with everything right now i know you guys are pretty locked down it's crazy it, yeah it's um it's a bit of a ghost town i mean there's still like you know there's there still is kind of plenty of people like on the streets i live in downtown so i can yeah. kind of you know i'm looking out onto the city streets um from my from my bedroom and there still is obviously like a, like a few people going about doing their thing but nothing compared to you know as you know how like congested this this city is but even on that front it's interesting just like having to do the you know the essential things that you need to do like going to the the store one day you you know you'll go to the store and it's kind of like yeah well the pasta's gone but you can get into the store and no one's <laughs> no one's like yeah. keeping a dis safe distance from each other and then the next day there's like a kind of queue to get in and it takes you an hour to get in there so that yeah that's another thing that i that i think is an interesting component to this and probably uh worries me more than than the health aspect is people's reaction especially in a city like la you know where it's quite fucking nuts <laughs> on the best day yeah. just just how people could start to kind of panic and stockpile and buy their guns and you know i'm keeping an eye on citizen app as well as cnn have you got Citizen? Oh, yeah no i don't but i've heard about it i need to, mate, I need to get there maybe don't mate <laughs> it'll just it'll just <laughs> yeah, freak no, you out another it'll, thing that i'm gonna, gonna keep me up at night right? yeah yeah <laughs> literally i'm there you know and it'll just it'll just um alert me it'll beep and it'll be like uh someone's getting robbed right now you yeah. know 0. Yeah, 0.2 well. miles away yeah, you just hop out with your gat in the front porch just sitting there yeah, yeah mate and I, <laughs> mate, I, i'm british i have no experiences i have no experience with guns and i probably shouldn't say this on the podcast but if anyone <laughs> wanted to come and fuck with me like it would be easy <laughs> literally you could take my shit like, and yeah. i don't even know anything about guns so it could just be <laughs> fake plastic they just knock on the door and i'd just freak out and be like take it man <laughs> good to know <laughs> yeah we well, don't don't tell anyone mate <laughs> this is our little secret yeah, what are you? Is it like Fort Fort Knox down at um, Greg Mike Mansions? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we're just you know big doing cigar the, in your mouth. Ain't no yeah, one getting in here. Yeah, yeah, they can't get through the moat. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All about the moat, man. No, no, we're just trying to make sure we do the uh, what is it called? Uh, the delivery where they don't touch where they don't uh, touch the uh, doorbell and and touch the door now hands what is the hands free uh, yeah. yeah 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 drop it off at the doorstep yeah. but um and let I it air, air out for 72 hours <laughs> yeah right do you know what i mean that's it it's like uh, my girlfriend will will get it dropped off and then my girlfriend will just come in with like a fire extinguisher <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's just like well now like, now it's gonna taste of disinfectant you know yeah. Um, but mate, even with that, like, do you live in a, are you in like a house or an apartment yeah, building? Yeah, in a house. Yeah. yeah. So I'm in an apartment building and no one can get in. There's no, um, there's no like, there's no like reception. There's no front desk uh -huh. and it's, it's a nice place, right? Yeah. It's a nice place to live, but there's also no, you know, I can't buzz people in. So I've got a uh, more often than not, unless someone happens to be walking by, I've got to go down and, um, and meet them and get my food anyway. Yeah. So wow. is it, it's a bit weird because you open the door and there's your delivery driver and you're both kind of like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just put it in my trunk. Put it in my trunk. <laughs> yeah. Just like, throw it in my squirt, face. Squirt, 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 squirt. Okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> throw it in my yeah. face, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Nuts times. Bonkers times. When will this all end, bro? When was the last time you were in LA? Um, when was it? Oh, um, for... So a few months back, Justin Bieber did a uh, charity art auction that he held at UTA, the uh, United Talent Agency. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, their I art saw space. that, actually. I saw that on IG, yeah. man. And I yeah, thought, why has really Greg not invited me down to this? I want to hang out with Justin Bieber. <laughs> good, good, good call. Next time, I'll, I'll make sure I hit you up. But, Please, man. Yeah, no, it was cool. I mean, he, he just brought together a bunch of artists that he's fans of and reached out. And, you know, it was all um, a charity event. So created a piece for it, donated it, 
and got a lot of good people in the room together and raised some money for charity that he was passionate about. So it was awesome. What would do you? What was the charity? Um, it was a, uh, I believe it was a children's hunger charity based in LA. I don't know, remember the name off top, but yeah. So. Did you see that video um, where Justin Bieber is like fa someone's FaceTiming Justin Bieber like a fan? But I, but I guess they didn't realize that he was going to answer or something like that. They just thought it was impossible and, and bless this girl. But she's like naked on her bed <laughs> and he answers. Yeah, but he answers. He doesn't see her straight away. And then he like, he, he goes off camera. <laughs> looks away and you just see her fucking jump off her bed <laughs> and then he he comes back in and he's like hello is anyone there <laughs> mate he's classic i like justin bieber yeah he's a good dude he's a good dude so um are you good mates with him now like has he got some has he got some uh greg mycart hanging up in his in his house um well i actually so i met i met jb through scooter braun who was used JB, to be from, eh? uh, from <laughs> from atlanta so it's it's uh Scooter is a friend of mine who, who uh, signed Bieber back in the day. Uh, he used to rep a dude called Asher Roth, who's a uh, rapper who lives in Philly now. I remember Asher Roth. Yeah, so that's how I connected with Scooter. And I used to hang with Asher, and then, and then he signed Bieber, and that's kind of how we all linked on that one. But what, what's that? Is Asher Roth still making music? Yeah, he's still he's rocking. Still I saw he's about to, he's, yeah, he's about to put out, put out another project, I think. Uh, sometime in the next few weeks here, but uh, yeah, he's just kind of, he's living his life up in Philly, you know, I think he's, he's a really humble dude that just wants to kind of be out of the LA limelight and kind of create his own music in his studio and kind of, you know. Yeah, I of, used to rate him a lot, man, like, um, yeah. he's quite lyrical, right? Like yeah, 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 Like a proper sure. MC, he's yeah. into, into his lyrics. No, he was yeah. good, man. Yeah, so, yeah, that's kind of how we connected on all that front, but. Yeah, it's cool to see, you know, like, you know, people that are at that level from a musical standpoint, you know, people like Bieber and whatnot that are starting to really appreciate the contemporary urban art and street art and, and follow that stuff. And, you know, it's cool with his whole charity thing. It was like, you know, he was able to kind of pick the artists that he likes, that he follows, that, you know, he's he's discovered himself. You know, a lot of, I know once you get to a certain level like that, a lot of, there's a lot of people probably in your ear like telling you, oh, you got to like this or like that, or, you know, these are the, the trendy artists or whatnot, so. Yeah, you're just kind of doing it, you're, you're appearing to, to like be into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Not really. So, oh, so he, so he properly did kind yeah, of Yeah, he curated it. it all himself, yeah, which was rad, yeah. yeah it's mad, so. I wonder why he didn't see any of my artwork and be like, <laughs> Have, have I'm sure I'm sure there's a there's supposedly hopefully it'll happen again next year so hopefully it's something that continues but virtually yeah virtually everything Mate, virtual. well you should get in there now and be like we're the uh we're the kings <laughs> of the virtual 3d gallery tour yeah virtual kings yeah when's your next um when's your next drink and doodle live uh, um and are you going to go bigger is there going to be more people yes yes how'd you know <laughs> just evolution mate yeah no we we had a call this morning with our team the recap call and just you know thinking about how we can expand it i mean i think that was always the idea when we started talking about it but it was like all right let's do atlanta with the home team and see how it goes and use it kind of as a tester and if it goes well and people respond well to it then we'll we'll you know grow it out to you know our larger database because you know we work with just like you guys i mean we work with our gallery and agency abv we work with you know close to 350 artists globally Mm. Uh, whether that's like you know everything from murals to art shows to projects that we produce so i would love to kind of expand that and bring in you know folks from all over the globe so yeah it's definitely something we're talking about now so the fir <clears throat> the first um drink and doodle was only atlanta people was that uh this one that we did last night yeah 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 because oh, really? we had a because we have basically we have the whole year planned out so they were all supposed to, you know, they're all booked out. Like all our artists that we've worked with, you know, they'll sign up at the beginning of the year for each one. We have 12 spots or 12 uh. spots and we usually leave one spot open, one or two spots open for like a guest. You know, if there's new talent or a local emerging artist that we see or we'll even put it out through our IG feed and be like, you know, who should we who should we feature this this month and then you know we'll do a little poll and people will comment and, and share profiles on there. Yeah. But so, yeah, so, so before we, so, we had all the artists booked, you know, I mean, and it was like for like months in advance. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. they were like, what's the deal? Is this shit canceled? And I'm like, no, like, we're going to just flip the switch yeah. on it. You know, 
and go live with it. You know, so the, so like so. the next one and the ones like going forward as it evolves, you'll still have your 12 Atlanta artists every time that you booked in, but then you'll add in a bunch of others. Yeah, like I think Zoom I'm going to do like, take like 100. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably do a special edition, you know, with some more folks and, and bring it outside of the state. So, which, so that way, that way I keep, you know, keep the artists we had on board and booked, you know, for the monthly editions yeah. and do some special edition ones. Which artists did you have? Um, did you have, um, mate? Who's my favorite Atlanta artist at the minute, apart from you, Frico Rico? No, not on that one. But Frico's done a bunch of them. Frico's the homie. Yeah, we battled. We <laughs> oh, you were there when we battled in yeah, Atlanta. I was there. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. He man. drew that really, really yeah. flattering yeah. Uh, portrait. Yeah, yeah, that was that was hilarious. But <laughs> I mean, that's like the the that's what Secret Walls is all about. You know what I mean? Is you know, he put me on Front Street. I mean, half of the shit he was just making bullshit up. And I even, like, I text him. I'm like, yo, why did you write that shit? He's like, I don't know, bro. I was like, it just came to my head. And I thought I'd clown your ass. I was like, yeah, I was amazing, like, yeah. Right? So, you know, we were both, like, taking funny shots. But that's what that shit's about. And he's, like, a perfect example of somebody that's, like, perfect for Secret Walls. Because he goes into the ring and he'll swing punches left and right just to knock the other team down. And. You know, that's what it's, you're not supposed to hold that shit back in secret walls. It's supposed to just like, you know, even if it's, you know, it's like I almost look at it like Enfrico does this. It's like, you know, when you get your character, what's it called? You know, like a, a character drawn, um, you know, when you go to the fair or whatnot. Car caricature. Caricature, yeah. It's like, I feel like that's like his approach and that's like a lot of artists that are successful with secret walls is like, you know. It's, it's caricature take, on steroids. Yeah, yeah. Take their crazy qualities or, or and amplify them and, you know, stretch them out as far as you can. And, you know, I feel like the audience really gets a kick out of that too. It, definitely, man. And like, as, Frico's a great example of it because he can push it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He, he can take it to a real extreme level. Well, and he'll say shit that funny. like other people won't say. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, he had, yeah. He's got, he's one of those dudes that got no, he doesn't have a filter. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. you see it in his art and that's why like, again, it goes back to like what I was saying earlier. Like people like are really resonating now with authenticity and like just being real and not sugarcoating shit. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah, no, he does, man. And it's like, but the thing is, it is funny, right? Yeah, so, yeah there's uh, some humor in it for sure. Yeah, for me, it's a bit like kind of stand-up comedy. You know, I do believe that you can kind of, you can really joke about anything, but it completely depends in the context, on the context. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can, um, you can take a real taboo topic that like, is tough to talk about, and you can have a joke that has everyone cracking up together, you know? And yeah. I think that's, that's the kind of art in, in in sequels that, that you know yeah. really resonates the most with people no obviously like, yeah you couldn't like you know do that like if you were just to put out a post about somebody or something just like off the <laughs> rip like I, there might be some beef in the streets but like the minute like you know you do that in the live space like i'm just thinking of like events where i've traveled to certain like with you guys and, and done secret walls battles in other cities that i'm not even from and i'm like taking jabs about like a stereotype of the city and like all the city people are laughing about that but like yeah. if i was just about to like do that and post it on my social media people would be like nah bro that's not cool but like when you're there in the city and you're with the people you know they're they're it needs its, its context doesn't you know I mean? it yeah it great. needs its context and that's just this is the same as stand-up comedy you know like i've heard a, a few like a few examples of when um like a blogger will be sitting in a in a show, in a stand-up comedy show, and they'll take offense to, to something that the comedian says, and they'll write it down, like, verbatim, like, this is what they said. And yeah. obviously, in the, like, the next day, in the cold light of day, that's the, you know, the statement of what the comedian says. It sounds like yeah. <laughs> really fucking Horrible. offensive. Yeah. <laughs> but in the moment, you know, when everyone's drinking, yeah. and, you know, and laughing, yeah. it yeah. works, man. Um, yeah. All right, dude, so what, like what is next have you got any like big things coming up that are still gonna happen or is has your schedule been ravaged and you're literally like thinking up you know you're reacting and, and evolving day to day well, i mean or... yeah i mean i don't want to like go into too much detail but we had some crazy crazy things planned for 2020 just because a it's the 10-year anniversary of abv which is our gallery and agency it's a 10-year anniversary of larry loudmouth and what does a what does abv stand for a better view lovely yeah it's also the abbreviation for abbreviation <laughs> <laughs> that's dope man how, so how um, did that like how did that start quickly 
Uh, well, I was just doing like a lot of design work and private label stuff and collab stuff with brands, and uh, I was showing my art all over the country. And Atlanta really didn't have like a lot of street art, you know, post street art, post graffiti, you know, urban art galleries. I mean, I think we were one of the first that came out. Um, you know, I was traveling all over, meeting all these artists and building relationships and painting these festivals. And uh, I just was like seeing all this rad shit, whether I was in like LA or New York or Chicago or Miami. And I'm like, I need to like bring this to Atlanta, like bring all these artists I'm working with to Atlanta, but then also bring up the home team in Atlanta as well. So um, it's like a two part business. We have our design agency where we work with, with clients to do collaborations and produce everything from like event, event uh, activations to programs to murals and whatnot. And then we have our gallery, which is the more for forward-facing front end that people see, uh, which is you know showing art, doing these drink and doodle events and, and group shows and whatnot. So it was really just like everything that I was already doing behind the scenes, you know, like private label style, and just bringing it to the public and like really, you know, all these connections I was making, traveling and bringing them to Atlanta. And then that kind of spawned our mural festival, outer space project, which we've been doing for six years. And yeah, everything's just been growing. So it's crazy because 2020 was our 10-year anniversary. We had all these crazy plans and. You know, there was a lot of like expansion that was that was you know on the books, and now it's like, hold up, rethink that. You know, back to the drawing board. Yeah, so. and it, it's crazy, man. It's 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 nuts that we're kind of all in it together, and I I, I think that's, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but, it, you know, sometimes like a, a a one particular industry can suffer, you know. Um, or something can happen that kind of like one group of people feel it way, way, way more than another. But this one, it's like everything all together. Yeah. just. Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's like it's crazy because there are some businesses that are like this is you know a blessing for them, too. You look at somebody like a Zoom, right, or like, a, you know, any businesses that are online. So I got the, the little one in the background. The five week old. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's crazy to think about that too, right? Like some of these businesses are not phased. They've just seen their, you know, their numbers skyrocket. It's like people that are joining online based stuff, whether it is like Zooms and whatnot. That they're like, yes, this is the best thing that's happened to us. Yeah, right. Well, mate, like we, potentially that could happen for the Drink and Doodle and the, and the sequels live, you know? Yeah. It might be way, way, way more successful than the, uh, the original physical version. Yeah, I mean, that just goes to show, though, that you got to, like, you know, if you got an idea, chase it, see it through. You know, I'm sure when I said it to my crew first, they were like, yo, you're crazy. Like, that probably won't work. And then now everyone's like, damn, we got to grow. Let's scale this thing. Let's go bigger, you know. But it's like if you just sit there and you have these ideas and you don't act on them, you're never going to know if it's a, you know, if it works or it's a, f a fail. But my book, yeah. you know, L's are lesson learned. So it's like you learn off of everything you do, you know, so can't just like have those ideas that never are acted upon yeah totally and i think <clears throat> you know we as in secret walls and you and abv and and just greg mike as an artist we're we're quite lucky that um we have a lot of kind of like ammo in our wheelhouse to just evolve in the kind of like doing what we do you know rather than having to because i imagine there's a lot of people around with the thing that they do they just can't do it anymore it's you know it's really difficult for them to evolve so they're scram you know probably a lot of brands are going to do this as well we're probably going to see a lot of like inauthentic campaigns like popping up left right and center from from people just freaking out and scrambling to you know do whatever the fuck they can to stay busy and stay relevant but i think in a sense that we're lucky that you know you've got your uh your physical gallery that you're kind of turning virtual you've got your your drink and doodle we've got our sequels and and it's you know it's not a massive jump to just bring these things yeah. online um and like i was seeing like a lot of like i mean we had meetings all this past week of you know zoom calls with people from overseas like that have shifted their business models that were like you know agencies that mostly focused on like photo shoots that now are like all right now we got to work with illustrators and do illustration campaigns and motion graphics and whatnot so it's crazy to see some of these big press you know you know these different magazines and whatnot like shifting their focus and being like all right we're not going to do editorial stuff and um you know photo shoots and whatnot so like how can we work with artists you know so you might see a spike of like you know opportunity for artists from this so no that's true that's a good um that's a good point to make for any artist that will be listening you know to to 
I mean, I'm sure lots of them are, but to try and hunt out that stuff, realizing that, yeah, like products probably can't be, you know, clothing probably, it can't be shot on models. It can't be shot in lifestyle environments. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it, it has to be 3D or, or you yeah, know. Them like one person sending a, a, a product shot of you, of a, a garment and being like, illustrate something on top of this, that's cool. Or like, make it yeah. come to life, put it in a cool setting, you know, like throw it in, you know, do some 3D work around it. Like there's, you know, I'm interested to see like where those that's all going to happen because like at a certain time people got to get back to business like even if it is this new lifestyle you know so. Mate, it, it makes me wish that I had invented zoom I, I've never heard of zoom but like <laughs> maybe maybe two months ago I yeah. first heard of zoom and now I've been on zoom probably 20 times in the last 24 hours yeah it's wild might have to well, they're invest. a public company. You can invest. Yeah, I was just about I, to say that, mate. Aren't you? Are you? Um, you like Terry? Uh, are you on Robin Hood or whatever that oh, app's yeah. called? Oh yeah. Oh so yeah. Who, who are you investing yeah. in, man? Well, oh you, man, that's a personal give me some question. Tips. Personal question, but I'm All happy right, to we'll be. Just get, but I, but I'm happy advice. to be on. I'm happy to be on Zoom right now. <laughs> picks uh, up support, a, picks support. up a Red Bull. Yeah. No, I'm not telling you, man. Gets in yeah, his Tesla. Su supporting my uh, my yeah, my home team right here. Dude, did you? Um, I'm not saying that you did invest in Zoom, but if you had, did you do it? Would you have done it a long time ago, or was it like yesterday? Uh, it was a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no. I mean, obviously, once people saw everyone hopping online, it's like the, the, the Zoom um, sh shares. Is that how you describe it? I know nothing about um, investing because I will just get addicted to it and yeah. um, lose my mind yeah i mean obviously it's a crazy time right now for, for all that so but hasn't the, the the zoom shares must have grown like crazy yeah for last. sure um should I, should I jump on now i mean i'm not your financial advisor so i can't make those type of calls <laughs> you'll be coming back to me and showing me this video if i told you what to do yeah yeah I'll but, use hey you remember when you were uh, yeah you remember when you told me to do this and you put your life savings on it? And I start my fucking money, yeah. Greg. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, again, with the market, you never know, right? Tomorrow, everything gets better and nobody stops, everybody stops using you know, video conferencing or it slows down. But That's, that's I mean, why I can't do that. I, uh, I think uh, I'm interested to see, like, like we said, like, if everything goes back to normal and people get so used to using video conferences and now become like this you know, important part of their daily routine where they're like, we don't need to have an in-person meeting. We can have a Zoom meeting because we've been doing that for the last three months and it worked and it saved time on transportation costs and getting people all in one room and, and time and travel and whatnot. So, I mean, that's, that's my hope is like we become more efficient, but then we also integrate what we learned once we go back to what we used yeah, to I, th I think it will happen. I definitely think that I think there's a lot of things that we're going to carry on and a lot of changes that we've been forced to make will stick you know yeah. i mean like even just washing your hands i i consider myself <laughs> like a hygienic clean person but um you know i'm I, like i'm just washing my hands like a fucking maniac yeah. and even like not shaking hands and and y you know like the whole deal of like shaking hands you just take that for granted when you see someone you shake their hand but it's like why did we ever do that in the first yeah. place like wh what is that about like why why do we need to touch each other like that and i'm not against it like i think you know it's cool but even yeah, learning that, be like, yeah yeah people ball, are gonna, or just day. like a little a little yeah. fucking nod, little nod. <laughs> just stay back man yeah some it's dude hard. i mean you're so used to it too like i remember like right when they started like when the announcement came out and like we had meetings that were like trickling over before they shut down the city like I would like go to meetings and I'm like knowingly I'm like it's just like such an you've been doing it for how many years like still giving handshakes and I'm like oh man get yeah I, like, I did and that and then I get in the car and like put you know <laughs> yeah. sanitize my hands and I'm like with my coworker we're like you need some sanitizer you know all right we good all right cool all right I, I did the same thing man with <laughs> meetings like just a few weeks ago where you know things were starting to kind of develop and I like walk into me oh, put my hand out and the guy would be like no man I'm like fist bumping only. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, shit, cool. And then just feel yeah. like a bit of an idiot. Yeah. And, and now it's like, you know, so it wasn't second nature for me. But now yeah. it is second nature, like, not to go near anyone. A guy on the street asked me a question, like, where, you know, a direction or something. I'm like, yeah, cool, man, just up there. And he was like, oh, oh cool. Like, came in, <laughs> came in for like a... Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, literally, I did. I was like, dude, like, no offense, but um, I'm not doing that right now. Yeah. I've yeah. been told not to. 
<laughs> um, well, look, dude, before we um, jump off this crazy Zoom meet, how have you found this Zoom meet? And it's, it's so weird not being in the same, in, in our podcast studio. And yeah. like, also, this is the first time that um, I can like see myself, yeah. you know, as, as I'm talking, because usually it's just a, there's a camera on the, me and, and our right, guest right, right. in there. Yeah. So it's fucking weird, man. But um, The new I, normal. The new normal. Got to yeah. get used to it. But yeah. yeah, mate, before we jump off, is there, you know, anything that, that people need to know? Um, like when is the next drink and doodle and all that good stuff? I mean, the best thing is obviously social media is just follow that, you know, our channels and whatnot. You could probably post them so I don't have to rattle them all off. Mate, I'll put them in the I'll put in but, the, uh, put them in the captions and yeah, the comments. Yeah, I mean that's that's everywhere. the. I mean, obviously, I pl I stay pretty up to date on that on all platforms for my own work, you know, all my personal work, and then the gallery work and agency and our mural festival and all that. So we're always posting the new new events on there and keeping our our people up to date. Don't man. Well, look, I'm definitely gonna jump on uh, the next um, drink and doodle as a spectator. Yeah, and I need to get on. A, I need to join one of these uh, live secret walls battles. I'm interested to see how that's going down. You've got to. I mean, so obviously tune in um, on Friday. We're not announcing the the artists until like an hour before as well. Tight. Keeping it old school. It's kind of like what we used to do back in the day with locations. You know, we'd we'd yeah. we'd drop hold the it, location yeah. back. Yeah, just drop it right at the end. Um, but then once we drop that, like everyone can go onto their accounts. So we're letting the artists stream it. Um, so you know everyone can go onto their accounts once we drop it but yeah dude tune in and yeah, then call someone the fuck out what time is it at? It, the battle is going to be streamed live from 1pm uh, okay. PST this Friday or Saturday? this Friday nice the 20, cool. 27th is it? I believe cool um, but yeah mate yeah, that's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, twenty seventh. <laughs> so tune into that, man. And Isn't then... it weird how like all the days right now? Does it feel like? I mean, with me, it's like I don't know if it's Sunday or Monday or Wednesday. Or... It's like every Chay, day feels like Sunday. Mate, you know Sunday. Chay. Yeah, of course. Chay, he he posted on his stories. Um, it's like a bunch of Spider Man, Spider Man <laughs> is all looking at each other like there's there's seven of them, and they're just it's like, like oh, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. What day is it? <laughs> It's amazing. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. all blurring into one, man. But um, but look, dude, it's really good to chat to you, and it sounds like you are being as positive as an artist can be. So uh, you know, I'm sure that's going to inspire a lot of people when they so we can listen do. to this. It's all, it's we, all can we can do. do. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, you know, wash your right, wash mate, your well, hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, wash your hands. Stay six I'll feet away. Stay six feet away, and I'll see you on uh, Instagram Live or on Zoom or uh, YouTube oh, yeah. TV right. Live or or uh, what's the new one house party oh yeah you tried sure. house party not yet but i will check it out mate download that shit and <laughs> start start house party i'll check it out and hopefully we can uh, meet again in the physical format again sometime soon mate that would be wonderful and i pray <laughs> each day that i can embrace you once again yeah cool great chat all man. right mate nice one dude have, have a good one we'll chat yeah, soon. See you soon peace later